Okay, in this particular game, we're looking at blind spots, prevention of damage to your blind spots, being aware of your blind spots, and trying to avoid tunnel vision as best possible with a good focal point on trying to find your own good position within the game, as well as managing the opponent's attacks towards your area. In a nutshell, watch your blind spots. So we play white in this game, so we push through with c4. Also within this particular game here, we're playing a very strong player, uh, 2000 plus. So we're gearing up our game to basically play nice and steady. We don't want to over egg our pieces. So as we're developing the answer process, um, we're really advancing hopefully our knowledge with all the experience that we've gained with the answer process so far in terms of keeping our pieces safe trying to keep with the basics for the answer and not get too airy-fairy in any way shape or form so we've developed the knights out so it's all nice and steady what we're looking to try and do is kind of manage around the center of the board as best possible all right there so from this square this square this square we want to sort of manage around this area and that's our key focal points so when we talk about managing around the center this is what we're talking about this kind of zone here um, old school is there um, basically they say well you've got to control the center so let the old school come and try and control the center because more times out of 10 most players will do that they will want to try and own the center so why not play outside of that center yep giving away little secrets here but these are different ways of thinking in terms of um how ordinary chess players would normally play so how can we as ordinary players ourselves how can we kind of circumvent that because as we know all these types of maneuvers have been tried and tested it's not saying we're going to do anything different it's just a matter of a different psychology not controlling the center by throwing your pawns down try and obliterate the center so you can actually play some chess so we've gone for the fianchetto and you know we don't like the fianchetto but when i'm playing like the higher higher level players it is nice to kind of just sit back and see exactly what it is that they want to do. The higher up the board, most of the time you see play, um, higher level players doing this sitting waiting type thing. The lower rated players will go, you know, blasting in there, you know, going, oh, they're not doing anything. So I'll take the center and I'll overextend my pieces. And that's how, you know, you fall foul. Whereas if you get a clever lower rated player, they understand the psychology of what is actually happening so they don't overextend and they'll just play in their half of the board. So they castled and we brought the bishop through, obviously looking for a nice diagonal pressing through to here. Likewise, the opponent's doing the same thing. So we capture the pawn because we want to obliterate the center. We're not interested in center. We want to sort of manage around the center. And then the knight captures. So now we've kind of obliterated one side of the center. So we're not too bothered or concerned about grabbing this knight at this moment. Because what we don't want to do for our thinking is we don't really want to develop their piece for them, which would be the queen. So we castle and the first pawn move that i'm looking at here is um i'm saying to myself is that not a little bit strange because it's defending the knight but the queen is actually defending the knight so it's already defended is it not blocking the knights traversing into this um key square so that means that the knight is probably going to end up either blocking his queen or jumping out to come back in maybe or just to try and come across this side but it's a funny position for the knight it's not a very active position for the knight so this particular pawn maneuver here i'm sort of smiling to myself in the back of my head i'm going hmm that might be a loss in tempo because it's not as dynamic or threatening to anything that i'm actually doing 
it's just my thought process computers may say it otherwise um, so then we push through the center looking to open up our bishop you know to give it some life give it some activity any potential attacks coming towards here or here at some later stage but what I did notice was just from this particular opening and the potential threats are things like the bishop coming here or coming here the queen once that pawn moves the queen getting around here somehow and already I'm starting to formulate the fact that okay we might start getting attacked towards this area with the sort of position that they've got with their bishop and the queen and they haven't even got out of the gates yet so I'm immediately trying to cover off my blind spots already right from the get-go and a second pawn push so this second pawn push I really did have a question mark around it um, again a bit like the first pawn push here I'm thinking okay it might have been a loss in tempo this one I believed was a loss in tempo but there may have been some cleverness in their um, madness my idea potentially was just to attack this so that we could obliterate around the center <clears throat> if they capture then what we are doing is we're giving them this file with their rook so it kind of solidifies the fact that the potential for them coming across towards our King Gary with their pieces, with their rook, main focal point probably is going to be focused on this file here. Because then they're, it's like a half open file. So instantly I'm going, okay, with my calculation, if I do push here, this is exactly what we're basically enticing them to do they may already be thinking that themselves but um if i push this i know full well this is their angle so it's almost like cajoling a bull yep you want the bull to go in a certain way so you will give it a bit of an enticement to go left or to go right and no matter what the opponent may be thinking if i can try and control well manage my blind spots as best possible and turn my blind spots into positive activity that draws the opponent in then that's better than actually getting blindsided and then it being a proper blind spot that I've not actually managed so this is me holding the red rag to the bull on my next move the pawn has got um, a fork on the knight and it's got a fork on the pawn so in essence he has to do something I mean does he take the knight if he does happy with the pawn coming here no problems there but the red rag to a bull is too much to um, let go so now we know full well in our heads anyway that the treat has been taken so we grab the pawn with the knight Bishop comes down, so it's attacking a piece that's not got any protection on it at the moment. So we move the knight out of the way, attacking the knight again, but we're not actually looking to take this knight off the board. But with the position that we've got at the minute, it's looking pretty favourable for us, depending on what the opponent does next. Now this poor move here, so he's done one poor move which was a, a little bit lost in tempo, blocking the knight type situation. Then the other pawn push here which again really didn't give them the best opportunity. Now the rook is not, not really owning the file in the best way, we did give them the gift. But that gift will be coming later on. If we have a look at the position on the board and the bishop the bishop has now kind of blocked itself in because if we push this pawn onto the bishop where does it actually go without being taken so it comes here it gets taken if it goes here it gets taken if it goes there it gets taken so it's gonna to have to actually take the pawn or just ignore it But 
initially we have to bring the knight up because just bringing the pawn here by itself is simply going to capture so we need to give it some support so we bring the knight up it's managing quite a few squares anyway so it's quite a functional knight but it's managing this key square the queen is also managing this square so if the knight did get taken the queen can still protect the pawn and go up and actually jam this bishop in so a little bit of forward thinking so the knight actually comes down to attack the knight so it's come across but in reality we can now afford to take this knight off the board not much activity for this knight and the poor queen will be stuck behind here behind these pawns so we simply take the knight off the board because as we said the queen is protecting this square and the inevitable pawn is going to be actually push, pushing onto the bishop so they actually take with the queen so these pawn maneuvers one two three i'm sure i thought there was a fourth um they really didn't develop or help the opponent in positionally and there was no strong attack for us to worry about in any way shape so we pushed onto the bishop because we know that there's no way for it to go without it actually being captured so they bring their rook across so we capture the bishop and instead this file here which we gave to them like with the red rag um, now they're actually looking to own the adjacent file which maybe on thinking about it might have been erroneous but I don't know let, let me just have a look I mean I suppose in a way not going to take with this one because it's opening up the king let's see what the gauge bar says if he did took with this one if we take with that one do we go right up to the top no it's just staying there it's just staying there okay and that one does it stay there it's just staying there yeah you see that's actually weakened them taking with that pawn so it's gone plus four for us whereas this pawn here it only went plus three or something yeah plus three so I think there was more benefit taking this way than actually looking to own this file with the rook. Something to think about. Okay, so we captured the um, bishop. So now he's owning the file here. So at this point, definitely thinking, right, need to knuckle down now because we have the extra piece. But what we've always said is just because you've got more pieces on the board, does not mean you've won the game this is where it's so key to actually position your pieces and look at the blind spots of where your opponent is potentially going to attack because as we try to practice if we've got a, we're down a minor piece we're down a pawn we try and focus our pieces and corridor them so that we can put all our pieces together and put either pressure on key pieces key key squares or definitely towards the king area and if we can put as many pieces focused and trained on the opponent's weakness it's better for us so it wouldn't matter how many pieces they've got if we're focused and targeted so this player is like 2000 plus so um, I'm going to basically sit and wait and look to see where they're actually going to, ta uh, going to target unfortunately we don't see the gauge bar in the game you know so you have to have your own mental gauge bar yes i'm up I'm, I'm up materially but that doesn't mean anything to me what it means is for me is that i need to find better position because now my king is definitely feeling home alone it's only got the bishop in front of it there's no pawn in front of it so my opponent is definitely going to be thinking along the lines of getting his queen here you know facing down my queen here 
if he could get his knight in there we could get his knight in there get his rooks down here somehow you know somewhere wherever without the knight being there obviously and start working them together get this bishop involved you know all the way down here so all the attack process is going to focus on squishing my king and where are my pieces on the other side of the board that's a key thing to note my, my pieces are on the other side of the board so when you're managing potential blind spots before they actually occur a uh, bit like basically just prevention is better than cure really have to be mindful of what can happen next and if they start doing the corridor effect of basically getting all their pieces into one corridor working together as a team it's very hard to fight against that sort of mentality so we can now look to trade down so we take the knight off the board and we are got a two on one with the bishop and the queen on here it looks fancy and in my head I am thinking it's, it's getting a little bit too fancy dude he's, um, he's gonna get his rooks down here and stuff you know uh, maybe not to there or whatever um, or is there something else he could do uh, what, what could he do yeah that one there obviously supporting that would be a better move you know bringing the rook here and so that would be simplifying the situation and nothing to worry about so we could then develop our bishop we would probably attack his rook but then his bishop could come and defend and it could continue like that you know but then we saw this move and did that first go whoa is that a blunder but then no it's actually done like a interception type maneuver I'm not saying it's improving his position but what it does allow is space for his queen to come start targeting our king so we take I'm assuming this pawn's going to take then it's going to have space to attack our king so we need to mobilize our king in the corner and start getting active with our rook and maybe look to get our bishop into the game and start targeting towards their king Gary depending on what their bishop's going to do So we captured the rook because it was a, a nice little juicy piece it's a higher piece and we're aware of what potentially can happen and we looked at well yeah okay we can defend the area and it should work out okay for us it might be a bit of pressure uh, i can feel the pressure but it's doable so that's why we chose to go and take the rook off the board if it wasn't doable i wouldn't have taken the rook i would have gone okay fair enough he's blocked it and tried to find something else to do so they capture so now we move the king as we said just to block off from this situation and the bishop takes the pawn so he's now looking really menacing because he's got like a two on one here as we said if the opponent starts putting the corridor in where they focus their pieces uh, it's really quite difficult to deal with but if you do your own calculation what I didn't calculate was the bishop taking this pawn yep so truth be told on that side um, all I focused on was getting my king to safety so this was a new one so I had to recalculate my, man my maneuvers and went for my own interception move which was the bishop blocking the bishop then they bring their rook down so it's at this stage here now where I've done my calculation up to this point and then when they've brought this rook down I'm recalculating again looking at what sort of pressure can actually occur queen coming down is not too much of a danger point at the minute because there's nothing behind the queen supporting the attack on the pawn but what I would need to do is get my rook across here at some stage to defend the pawn because his pieces currently aren't working as together as what they could be to get like a double battery on this pawn here so I was also quite aware of any x-rays through to my queen just in case anything kicked off and, and it was more of a well let's put a two on one on the bishop maybe rather than any x-rays through because when i've done my calculation there wasn't anything meaty enough 
it's just I didn't want to lose any tempo and then end up having to take his bishop and then his rook actually takes my queen whether that would have happened or not don't know but we decided to go for queen attacking the bishop as you can see the gauge bars going well what are you doing you had it all it was all sewn up there didn't look really sewn up to me so my own personal gauge bar was saying no you need to just do what you're doing put a two on one on the bishop keep that pressure on so they move their bishop now the bishop is targeting this pawn here which would work quite nicely if also the queen is uh, going to get into this situation so we bring the rook like we said to basically challenge this area and they actually take the pawn anyway so we bring the rook up challenging the bishop then the bishop comes back and attacks the queen this was one of those quizzical movements there i think maybe that was done too quickly this is like um it was a correspondence game so it's a free day a move type thing and getting to this stage here um we we're you know firing out the moves in all in the same day you know so it's like they were moving pretty quick so now we're looking to challenge and maybe get this pawn with a check on his king so we were so focused on trying to get rid of this pawn because they've got two linked pawns in the center of the board and like we like to say we like to manage around the center but we can't let it go just because we like to manage around the center there's activity that is fairly strong especially for the later part of the game the end game process these two will be very powerful so we're trying to sort of break up these linked pawns as best possible with a potential check on the king to win a bit of tempo the queen comes down so now i'm thinking oh he's he's wanting to start getting across here and the tempo for me would be i need to get my king moving at least to this square if i can get it to here then that's fine but because his queen is going to be here he's actually going to be blocking any movement for my king especially if he brings his rook here i'm going to have to get this out before he starts squishing me properly but there is a key maneuver this is like a magic rook because anything that wants to challenge the king if he's, if my king is here i can just bring my rook down and block it off so this is the saving rook forward 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 thinking has helped assist this potential attack this potential corridor attack that the opponent is putting on us at the minute i think it's quite nifty that they're showing this this was a to me a good display of okay so what you've got more pieces on the board you've got a rook that's hiding over here in the corner your queen is in the middle of the board your bishop's stuck in the middle what pieces have you actually got protecting your king i've got he's got two pieces three pieces actually ready and trained in ready to go on my king so that's a real good positive the negative side to it is is that it's a one track one way ticket it doesn't have like a a further destination because it will dry out the attack will only last for so long and then they'll have to reposition then they're going to be on the defensive so that's the way that i worked that out it looks good looks awesome in fact but we've got to understand the tempi i'm also happy trying to get my rook here getting it around the back maybe putting a check on the king so we move the king just to try and win that tempo and get maybe maybe get it to safety here we need to get it to here so that this rook can come down and be the defender as best possible and for a brief moment i did lose my head i mean the gauge bar is saying there's nothing to worry about but um when i brought my rook here i says right well i think i've got enough time to come come across here to put a check on his king and then maybe do something with my queen and get him on the back on further looking um that didn't look too good really because yes we could put a check on the king and then he comes here but then realistically is there any check that i can put on him with the queen i'd have to come here which is not a check on the king 
to then come here to put a check on the king so that's one move out which the opponent will be putting devastation on me towards my king so that is just one move out I believe and I thought oh I, I don't think I'm going to go for that because the tempo on this side allows me to move my king across if they then come down we can then bring the rook down like we said so we'll move the king across again this is all about blind side managing your blind side you know it's not a, you know this oh you've got to just keep pressuring them and keep it on we are keeping pressure on them because we're putting pressure on their one track one ticket one way um attack process yeah, which is nice but if you don't know about it you're going to get caught and surprised okay so there are elements now of he's actually brought this pawn move down and uh, yeah i was kind of shocked at this move because at the end of the day it's like well what is it doing i mean if our queen was going to take here we're losing tempo because we have pressure on our king we need to make sure that that is sorted and we're happy and comfortable So this pawn here is only protected by the queen. So after thinking about this maneuver and then there was no real traction there, it's probably better bringing this rook here so we can have a two on one on this pawn. So we bring the rook, rook across now. So we're looking to eventually maybe get this pawn off the board. And then the rook comes down. And then obviously we bring the rook down de defending as we mentioned before. So I don't need to mention that anymore and the options were yes they can put a check on our king but we're nicely protected because we can bring the king up and then eventually get it across here because he's either going to attack us here or he's going to attack us here with the queen so this one track ticket type situation is starting to run out it's only got a few hours left of its journey so then the queen comes and puts the check on the rook's got no play and then we can move the king to safety so that's what I mean by a one track type of a process. Now all his pieces are basically on the other side of the board and not actually working together as a team. It did look awesome. It did look brilliant. If I was asleep, it would have caught me dead, dead bang to rights. Um, but I just like the way that that pressure was put on just because you've got an extra piece. This player just did not care. Bang, bang, bang. And that's the spirit of what we should be focusing on as part of the answer process. So they bring their rook back because obviously it had no traction. We'd be able to get that for free in a sense. Well, we'd get the queen as well. So they bring the rook back and it's attacking, well, defending the pawn here. So because they're quite into the inter interceptions or intermissions or whatever you want to call these moves, we bring our rook up here now blocking his rook with the intention of taking because we're looking at reducing down so he does actually capture we capture with the bishop so there's a little kind of mate threat type situation going on potentially comes and attacks our queen but if we drop our bishop here we, we've got like a mate threat which looks quite tasty so I'm hoping they forget themselves but they don't they bring the queen back down but this gives us the opportunity to potentially attack this pawn with the queen all we need to do is move the queen at king out of the way so we can attack and then he's got, we've got an x-ray through to the king pinning the queen to the king so we'll move the king out of the way and they attack our uh, queen but then we take the pawn so they take back with the queen so now we're up materially and it's towards the end game now so it's looking more favorable for us and i'm trying to keep it as simple as possible for myself and I'm thinking, well, if we can get a trade off of the bishop, or if they don't want to take, then we'll just take this pawn off the board here and then just keep on taking pieces because we've got the rook defending here. Mindful that he could actually put a check on us, but not too worried about that. We can move the king up and we'll still have that pressure on this pawn because we'll have two on one with the rook and the bishop. So we bring the bishop back attacking. And he does attack our king, so we then move the king up, then capture, and because we've got a two-on-one there, um, the opponent resigned. So 
to me that was the whole game was really about managing that blind spot aspect and not getting get, getting carried away just because you have an extra piece you have to have all your pieces working together as best possible and really understand the corridor or impact where pieces where people put their pieces together work them so strongly together to attack your king gary that you feel you cannot do anything and you can't breathe and you're getting suffocated if you work it out right and you see it way before it actually starts to occur you can start moving your pieces into the appropriate positions and avoid it being a full-on attack and just let it peter out like a little sparkler so yep interesting game